Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Uh, there's a keyboard that's been in the hobby for a while and it eluded me for quite some time um, and a lot of people cut their teeth on it. It does seem to be a little bit more popular internationally than it does in the US though it is available here in the United States. So a while back I don't even remember how long ago um, I had somebody on my channel ask me what I thought of it of one of the models it's been revamped several times and I was like honestly I've never taken a look at it and um, we got to chatting and they're like well here let me send you one I've got one let me send you one I'm like okay um, when you get a chance take a look at it I put it in my keyboard shelf and forgot about it uh, so move forward to a few weeks ago and I came across it again again from one of the viewers saying hey um, have you taken a look at the new new one this one I'm like no oh, actually I have it um, I haven't taken a look at any of them actually to be quite honest so I went ahead and reached out to the company and they were gracious enough they're like oh yeah hey we'll send you out um, a keyboard to take a look at of the new revision I was like hey when I arrived they actually sent me not one but two um, it's like the one the, the regular version and the plus version which I'm sure you guys can guess what it includes but when it arrived I was like wait a minute I have one of these but the one that I have is probably three years old maybe more uh, I think this keyboard came out roughly 2018, the first version. And bef before I just continue babbling about it, let me go ahead and pull it out. Now, this is the one that a viewer sent to me, the Techware Phantom. Um, as you can see, I think the label was actually on the actual outside of the box. And I never took a look at this. Um, and I kind of feel bad about it because... Like I said, this seems to be a really popular one. And the other day, I received these. The Techware Phantom Plus. This is 2023. And the Techware Phantom Plus Elite. Now, one thing I just noticed, actually looking at the box, these have double walled or double shot PBT keycaps. Um, these have double walled ABS keycaps. Both have the V3 stabilizers, 87 TKL. Now, this one doesn't say hot swap sockets, though this one does. Hmm. I figured, why not just go ahead and do them all so we can actually see how they've changed at least from one revision to the next. So let's go ahead and open up this one, which let me see if there's a year on here. Well, it says compatible Windows 10 as the highest. So Windows 11 came out, what, 20? All right, so Windows 11 has been around since late 2021. And if this one says Windows 10, I'm gonna guess 2020, 2021, this one came out. Um, <clears throat> so as we can see here, it does appear to only have three pin compatibility and uh, there's a white but it looks like Otamu style jackets the Milmac style jackets and if I'm not mistaken it is corded um, because I do believe I've seen a couple of videos of them um, turning it into a ported uh, keyboard and I actually have a few of those USB breakout boards I've done it to a few keyboards and I but I never filmed it so I think I'm gonna do that and I may do it with this one although I have I have a few keyboards um, I intended to do a lot more soldering uh, in my videos but it just I have a few kits that are sitting there waiting to be done it just takes time and I I haven't gotten around to it but I do need to make more time for kits soldering and fixing stuff um, I've actually got a part on the way I don't know when it was supposed to be here already but uh, that I think will help make 
uh, solder keyboards hot swappable but hot swap compatible with any pins um, but I don't know yet until it gets here and I'm gonna try that out on a moto speed numpad that I have and if that works then I'll move on from there anyway so this is the fan the techware phantom uh, by the the lack of Windows 11 on the box I'm gonna say this was released in 2020 but let's go ahead and take a look at it let's set it aside at first and just see what we've got in here oh, the baggie was open we have some extra these are yep they're Otemu Otemu Browns and they're stock we can hear the ping and despite no keycap puller they do have a horseshoe switch puller okay and it does come with a dust cover which is nice I mean it's pretty flimsy but it's still easy enough to just throw on there so that you have uh, that protection <clears throat> and here we are with the techware phantom um, I'm gonna go by the stabilizers this is revision 2 or version 2 um, it is the one that is still corded I don't think it was the first one they released uh, but I would guess it'd be the second one. Do we have a date on here? Nope. No date on here. We have a... Oh, that's why. I was wondering why they didn't have a key count folder. They've got one built into the base. Now, this, these panels and this remind me a lot of the bottom of the GMMK. Uh, the GMMK TKL, the one, uh, not the Pro. Uh, but because they have these paddle feet. And they also have a spot for the keycap puller. So, yeah, we do have a nicely thick and nylon braided um, USB cable that also has a nice little cover on it. So, with a tail. And we see it goes straight into the case. And that should be an easy fix. There's plenty of room there. I should be able to put the port there. No problem. So, I'll definitely schedule that. Uh, for a future video, so let's go ahead and add all this. But taking a look right here, uh, we have basically uh, um, flat corners or edged corners because they're not rounded, they're just flat parts. Uh, basically, it looks like somebody came along and just cut off the corners at the same degree angle. Um, we see because there's no lights on at the moment, we can see the sub legends. We have memory positions, it looks like, or macro positions, I should say, um, as far as RGB and browser, multimedia controls, and brightness and speed. All right. So, as far as the keycaps go, these do appear to be ABS, and they're kind of rough there at the bottom. Now, they are 1.5 millimeters, so um, ABS or PVT, I mean, these are ABS, but that's not bad for a stocking cap. That's that's a decent, um, decent thickness. Now, we do have a plastic bottom and what appears to be a steel plate. Yep. That's one of the problems with steel plates and stock switches that the ping inside of that switch is going to use the steel plate almost as a speaker and just reverberate. Setting that aside, I, um, I'm tempted to uh, lube these up because Otemu switches most of them not all of them but they're actually not that bad once donut dip the spring put a little bit of a uh, grease on the back of the leaf spring and they they actually i mean they're not amazing i'm not gonna build statues to them but they definitely work and i got no complaints i can use them especially browns i like their browns and i like their reds so these browns are very similar to Gatoron browns. They're like a drunk linear. 
I mean, you, the bump's there, but barely. Um, so I gotta say, I like the fact that they come with the thicker keycaps. I've always liked the floating key design. Uh, they have the logo there, but I'm pretty sure that will probably come off with a little bit of um, non-acetone nail polish removal, which I'll definitely do when I come back to it. Now, it does actually sound like it has some uh, some dampening in there. Let me see. Now, one thing to note, obviously, is the fact that we have this, uh, PCB has these raised LEDs, so that's why switches have this big at big window, um, so that they can get over that. But there's going to be a lot of switches that are not going to work <clears throat> if they have the flat bottom. So yeah, there seems to be an open cell phone down in the bottom, and there actually appears to be some sort of phone between the plate and the PCB. So. That's actually quite interesting. Let me see. Yep. See it right there. So, I mean, this is actually well appointed for being a budget um, a gamer keyboard. So, yeah, we're dealing with the. Um, Otemu, Milmax, they're basically jackets, they're made, they were originally made for pins, like on ICs, so that you could, you know, make the rows, you plug them in, and, you know, be able to pull them in and out, EPROMs, whatever, but as the switches have grown, we obviously know the Kale Hot Swap sockets that basically have little alligator clips inside of the circle, um, and obviously we only have uh, the three holes, or the one for the center post and the two pins. So, we can use five pin switches in here if they have the skinnier pins, but you'd have to clip off those two extra legs, which are meant for mounting on, um, to, to mount directly on PCBs, which isn't done as often as I thought it would be. All right, so let's plug this in and see what we got for RGB. Huh. All right, so I just I was just taking a look at the Sonics uh, QMK. I was right; it does have a Sonics MCU. Um, it there, it's possible to run QMK on it, but there is no folder for it as of yet. Um, so anyway, let's check out what I think this is. There's the different RGBs. The lights seem nice and bright. You can definitely see them. Hmm. So you can get solid colors, you can get a lot of different effects. Um, they seem to shine through decently enough. Um, the legends aren't anything to write home about. They do have a combination of symbols and letters. I um, really wish they'd pick a, pick a lane, but uh, I see a lot of keyboards that do this. Um, so, I do say I like the design. Though. Um, I want to get in here, and I want to mod it up. Gazoo switches will work in a Temung hot swap socket, so I think I could make this keyboard sound really good. Um, I've heard some pretty good um, expressions of this keyboard on YouTube where people have modded and they've done a really nice job with it. So I'm, uh, I'm interested to see. I mean, I think, to be honest with you, just lubing these uh, these switches, I think, will make a big difference. But 
few other things. Not too much. And I think this will do really well. Yeah, those are some pretty bright lights. And this is pretty good. A lot of RGBs cannot do like a true white. And this is a pretty close to true white. There's the slightest hint of blue, but it's not a blue white. So I'm actually quite impressed with the RGB on this. All right, so taking a look at these stabilizers. Oh, they're pretty good. They, they've got a bit of looseness, but nothing like I've been seeing lately on some uh, pre-builts. They could use from a little bit of tightening, but they're actually pretty good. And they do look like they're lubricated. They're not, they are not overly lubricated. They lubricated just enough. So that's a um, that's something nice to see. So I'm actually I gotta say there's some things that bug me about it. The corp I can fix that. Um, the non lubricated switches, but I mean really I can't I can't really complain about that. That's just me being nitpicky. But for a board that's you know two three years old. I actually kind of like it. I gotta say, I I'm looking forward to modding it. I am. I think this will this will be fun. Uh, I am gonna. I'll do. I'll be doing a sound test of all three of these at, in the end. But like I said, this one. I mean, this isn't really going to do as much justice as I'd like because, again, if there's any, is there any switches that are still on lube and springy, that reverber, reverberation that the steel plate causes will make them ring as well. But I want to see if I can at least. These are red dragons. Um, I've already lubed them. Uh, red uh, red dragons are just a uh, Temu bad switches most of the time. Although I think that, I don't know, RK might make some of them. But these work fine. Oh, hear me talking about them working in Otemu Hot Sauce. No, it went in. It's just a little bit tight. That's all. At least you don't have to worry about actually breaking the so socket itself. More, more chance of breaking the switch than the socket. Or bending the leg out of place. Lubed, not lubed, the browns. Lubed reds. Yeah, I think I'm going to have fun modding this keyboard. Because I think I'm going to be able to, I think I'm going to be able to make this sound pretty good. All right, so next up, we're going to go with the Phantom Plus. So we first we took a look at the Phantom, probably the second or third edition of the Phantom. This is the Phantom Plus. As far as I understand, this came out either early this year or late last year. 
Um, I mean, this one actually says Windows 11. So, version 3 stabilizers, clipped and lubed, PCB bottom and double foam, 16.8 million RGB colors, double shot ABS keycaps, silicone spacebar filler, and oh, these are the Wraith switches. I've heard of Wraith switches. Okay. I haven't tried Wraith switches, but I've heard of them. Tuned by the engineers. They're pre-lubed. Whoa. All right, so now that's, um, I did not know that. So like I said, I'm learning about this keyboard today. So for those of you that have had it for a while and know about it, please be easy on it. All right, so we've got that sticker out of the way. See, they've got orange, which looks like a red, brown, which is normal. Oh, no, orange is a tactile. Pink, a heavy pink, and they have a red. I like that they have a heavy linear and a somewhat light, light tactile. Hmm, interesting. All right, so we obviously don't have a corded um, keyboard because here's the detachable. And seems of the same quality. It's really nice and thick. Um, USB-C to USB-A. Yeah, it's a braided cable. Has it has the Velcro strap on it. This is it's a nice cable. This is nicer than what you get on a lot of in stock keyboards. We have the standard uh, keycap wire and switch puller, and this is better. We don't have to hide it underneath the keyboard like the plastic one. And it looks like are these orange or are these brown? They look more orange. Oh, I guess sticker on the box says no. Oh, these are browns. Okay. That color looks more gold. No paint. I'd say this is actually not that much more, but more tactile than a regular brown. The bump begins at the top. And then you kind of just slide off on it, and then you feel it in the middle on the way back. But it's just not, it's not as pronounced, but it's there. It's more pronounced than the brown. Has a nice kind of harsh bottom out, and almost appears to be maybe two tenths of a millimeter, like so, a slight long pull. I just love that there's no ping, so color me very curious. Also, I, I know that, you know, I've already bought the product if I'm at this point, but to actually have more, not necessarily marketing material, but this is kind of a, it acts as a confirmation that, hey, I, I bought something that's worthwhile because look at everything that it has. That's pretty cool. And then we have a message from the founder. Thank you for purchasing the Phantom Plus. We've done multiple upgrades over the previous generation in order to give you the best out of the box experience for a mechanical keyboard. We hope you will enjoy it. Well, we are actually taking a look at different generations here, Jackson. So I think I must agree. And here we are with the Techware Phantom Plus. I've got to say, they retained these uh, cut-off corners like they did in the other one, but a lot of it is very similar. Obviously, the bottom is different, but we still have these panels. We've got a bit of a recessed port there, but eh, that's neither here nor there. But I can tell you off the bat, it is definitely better dampened. This feels a lot, a lot sturdier and just a lot more substantial. Um, so they definitely, <laughs> they, they took it up a notch. The legends, the legends are definitely much better. I guess this would be easier just to do a side by side, no? So here we have the newer one. Here we have the older one. So we can see we've lost the cord. Our sub legends that are on the front on this one we're on the top over here so it makes it look cleaner this these make this stand out and almost make the shine through legends almost not visible here you can see the shine through legends much more plus the uh, 
printed or laser etched or however actually it looks like they're my maybe die sober stickered on there um they're on the front or on the front side so they don't stand out as much and give so much of a contrast between the shine through and the solid but like i said we have the same corners it looks like we have very similar dimensions as well um they still stuck with the um mix of symbols and words but yeah i mean some things are going to stay the same we have the a for caps lock i wonder what the when that might be windows mode I'm not sure if they have a Mac mode or not. One thing that I just noticed that neither box had was a manual. But I'm going to assume that I can go to the website and get a manual for instructions. Um, now wait. Not that this one's light. But this one feels... Yeah, it definitely feels a little heavier. Not, not like by a pound or anything, but it's heavier. It's definitely heftier. Now... stock gamer i hate to put gamer labels or labels in general on keyboards um i know that this company makes other gamer peripherals but this is a mechanical keyboard i can be a non-gamer and still want a mechanical keyboard like this i like this i i am for a stock keyboard this is definitely in the top five as far as being able to pull it out of the box, put it on your desk. There we go. Little work there, but. I like it. I honestly, I want to put it at my desk. I, I probably will after this video. I'm going to put it at my desk and it's going to be my, just like this. I'm going to put this on my desk after I'm done filming this video. And I'm going to daily driver this, this thing for a little while. I've got to say, um, for an under hundred dollar in stock budget keyboard, this is this is pretty good. I, I like the switches. I like the feel. I love the sound. It's that crunch. And I haven't even done anything to it. I can't even imagine once I actually dive into this thing. Like I said, that's what I guessed about this one. The way that it's constructed, I'm pretty sure that I can get some deep tones. And... This just proved it for me because, yes, they are slightly different, but they maintain a lot of the same language. So, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. I am, <laughs> I like it. I just, I mean, I won't say, wow, it's been a while since I've been surprised by a keyboard and excited. No, I get surprised and excited by keyboards way too often. But this is what I do. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy playing with keyboards. I enjoy modding them. I enjoy learning about them. I enjoy, well, breaking them and fixing them. And I enjoy sharing, you know, my because I do. I do it all off the cuff. I don't write scripts ahead of time. I rarely even, you know, take too much of a look at the keyboard so that I can go through it as I'm making the video. Yes, as I'm making the video, I will look up specs to make sure that I'm, you know, not miscommunicating anything. But I like discovering it, you know, and and showing, uh, having the, the, the experience on film. So I'm capturing it on film. And, I mean, I do. I get a lot of feedback, um, public on comments, and people just sending me messages, emails through Reddit, through Discord, you know, thanking me. Well, I saw your video on this keyboard, and I was really stuck for, like, you know, weeks on which one I should buy because you said this, and then I found that, and... You know, so many people, I, I know I'm not 
you know, it's not like I'm sharing technologies that will, you know, get rid of climate change or anything like that. But all of us have to still go by through day, day to day, regardless of what's going on on the outside world. Having hobbies, whether that hobby is knitting or collecting watches or playing with mechanical keyboards or Legos, whatever. It's something that brings happiness and joy. Yes, there can be frustration, obviously. Um, I just got done, well, not too long ago, working on the MK870, and I replaced the plate. I needed to do screw and stabilizers on the PCB, and those stabilizers just did not want to work with me. And yes, I was frustrated, but when I was done, I was happy. Um, and even through those frustrations, you get those little challenges that, you know, when you surpass them, they bring joy. And I'm sorry, anything that brings joy, we we need more joy in this world. But that's about as political as I'm going to get today. Anyway, so this is at least two years surpassed from this one. You said there's no dates. I'd go with those. But as I felt that this one was going to give me a good base I think this one just confirmed it. Now, let me take a look. Are we dealing with the same hot swap sockets here? Yes, we are, actually. Ah, huh. I am surprised, but not deterred. Because, again, now here, I may just stick with these switches. They're not bad. I like the tactility. It's a light tactile. It's, it's a really light tactile, but... It's not a drunk linear like a regular brown. This is a, if I, this is a better brown than a brown. All right. Looks like they're 1.5 as well. The box said these were ABS. I like when they put that on there. Too, too many times I have to hunt down and figure out what material it is um, on these pre -builds. So, again, we do have the, um, the raised LED, but we can see that we have, it feels like a silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB, and it looks like a nice dense closed cell foam. Oh man, and we even have an IPX sheet above the PCB. Now this is, uh, why had I not come across this yet? Why, why did I completely just bypass Techware? I mean, I don't know. Just like I, I will call out a keyboard that has issues as soon as it has issues. I mean, this one has Otemu style hot swap sockets. You're going to be limited. But my favorite switch is a Kazoo Boba, and they'll fit in here. So that's okay. Plus, I've been finding some MMD switches lately. They're super nice for a super good price. But I got some reviews coming for some switches. I haven't quite gotten my format, but I think my format is going to come together as I do more switch reviews. So, uh, and those will be coming here shortly in the next week or so. I've got a whole slew of switches to, to, to bring to your attention and hopefully help you find the switch that's right for you. I'm playing with this so much. Well, how about we check out what the RGB looks like on this puppy? Let me pull this guy out of the way for right now. We're done doing any comparisons. All right. Ports on the left side. Looks like we got a Sonics in here too. You can tell by the way the lights boot up. We have some nice bright RGB. Really decent RGB. I mean, this RGB is bright. And you're not going to miss it. Now, it's one thing that I will say. I mean, I don't like those raised RGBs because uh, they can interfere with some switches, but they do deliver a much brighter because they're not flipped upside down RGBs. They're actually flush with the PCB. They're sticking out somewhat, and that, that gives them, I think, better ability to fill up the entire legend on the keycaps and just be brighter altogether. I like, I'm just going to sit here and stare at it for a while. It's, it's just nice. It's, it's pretty. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to, well, I don't want to say that I'm going to test drive this one because we got one more. So maybe, maybe that one's even going to change my mind even further. So this is the Phantom Elite. 
Yeah, this is the Phantom. No, I'm sorry. This is the Phantom Plus. We're going to be taking a look at the Elite. So this is, we first took a look at the Phantom, uh, the older revision. So this is the Phantom. This is, I believe this year's, or at least late last year, early this year, the Phantom Plus. Now we'll take a look at the Phantom Elite Plus. All right, so here we've got the Phantom Plus Elite. I said it backwards before. So this one, Wraith Lube switches, double walled PBT keycap. So it looks like, are they shining through? I guess they are, because they got the rainbow going through. But we have a white one as opposed to a black one. We do look like we have different lines on here. This is a three mode wireless. And we have the pre-lubed orange tactile, which I love getting to try new switches. So let's see what else we've got. It says here, okay, it gives us the same uh, chart that we had on the other one. We have Bluetooth 2.4 gig and wired. We have the V3 stabilizers. Uh, we have sound dampening foam. We have the 16.8 million RGB. Double shot, double walled PPT keycaps, and a 2500 milliamp hour battery, which says up to 250 hours of continuous usage depending on the brightness of the RGB. All right. Oh, okay. I missed that. Scan a QR code for a manual. Less paper wasted, and when you need it, you can just find it. So that's what I was assuming was going to be the case. So, actually, kind of smart of them to do that. Um, Especially, you know, things change in the manual or there's updates or whatever. They can update it and people aren't stuck with old information. So in the box, we have our 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And thankfully, they actually put the name of the keyboard on there. So you're not like, which keyboard does this dongle go to? Oh, Phantom Elite. Got it. Um, we've got some spare switches. See? These... Are these, are these the same? I don't know. We'll have to see. We have a nice little cart. Oh, a quick little user's guide. Nice. It looks like they might have... No. Oh, yeah, they did. No. Doesn't look like they changed anything. Yeah. Still seems to be... Oh, it's got the Bluetooth. Okay, so we've got three Bluetooth device slots in the 2.4. And instead of doing the QWER, they do the function plus one, two, three, and four. All right. And we have a very nice um, coiled and braided USB A to USB C rubberized. And um, this is a very nice cable. Yeah. I can dig it. Surprisingly enough, this one didn't have a dust cover. It's not. A big deal. I just like it when they put them in there. It does, though, have a removable shroud. And look what we have. Basically, the same design underneath. Now, I'm curious if this would... Oh! <laughs> oh, so yeah, so it fits. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking the, the designs are so similar that I could probably take the shroud off of one and put it on the other one. So now we have, I'm going to just set this aside. One thing I did not check on these, these V3 stabilizers. What do we have here? Yep, those are nice and tight. They're lubed just enough, and they don't feel like they're going anywhere. So I like those V3. Go ahead. I like that it's magnetic. It just jumps on there. We could do some two-tone and have some fun with that. All right, so here we have... Oh, yeah, this definitely goes up in weight, but I know we have a battery in here, so that's definitely going to change it. I got to say, for a white keyboard, it looks really nice. Uh, oh, man. Oh. The paint is chipped up here. If you guys can see that, but that's the paint on the plate. Now that can be fixed, but that's going to start 
just cracking away and pieces of paint are going to come up. <sighs> well, that's a, that's a minus for QA and QC techware, but right now you're in my good graces, so I'm going to mention it and we're going to move on. Now looking up below, we have a very similar case, the exact same case it looks like, but we have that little spot that was just a appeared to be a cutout. There's where we actually have the, it's a bit too recessed of a USB port, but we have the switch for 2.4 wireless. So we can go ahead and turn it on. I guess that means we're running off a of battery. I gotta say, for a stock keyboard, this is, um, it's impressive how well it sounds. It really I, I don't know, I'm just kind of, just kind of taken aback by how well this keyboard just tends to sound. Yeah, I, oh. now I did scratch up that plate just by trying to pull this up. So the plate just seems to be, I think the plate needed a little extra time in the oven to finish coating. Now these look like orange, and I thought these looked like orange, even though the box said browns. No, no, I guess they are brown. So, it is very slight. That's the brown, which looks very, um, very light. And there's the orange, it's almost golden. So they're both kind of leaning towards the same profile now. Huh, they do have very similar tactility, just different weights. This one's lighter. But I like them both, I gotta say. That just kind of irks me. I mean, sometimes, you know, stuff's just gonna happen when you're trying to pull out a switch, but. Now, these stabilizers are the milky ones but surprisingly enough they're as solid as they can get stabilizers are so well placed on the plate that even if i place tape on there i don't think they'd actually snap in place because i don't even think they have the room for that now despite it saying universal compatibility which they do have the correct sockets they don't have the three pin or the holes for the other two pins so oh, keycaps come in at 1.5 just slightly thinner but they are the double shot and they're top double shot that's probably why they're not quite as thick but again I'm honestly surprised at how well these keyboards sound. I mean, it's it's honestly a little surprising. You don't see this that often. So just looking real quick, um, I was like, I thought they put on here that they were five pin hot swap compatible. And then I come to this, I'm like, wait a minute. That's not the case. But then, when I looked at or the website for it, and this is what it appears to be. Let me see. Aha! How did I do that? How did I put a five pin switch in there? The holes are there, they just didn't make the holes for the IPX pad that's going above it. So no need to pin or clip any pins or legs. So I thought that was kind of, um, cause I was gonna say, I was like, I thought that I saw that, but that's actually pretty ingenious if you're only gonna use the three pins and you don't have the holes in there, but I don't know.
So I'm definitely looking forward to modding um, these keyboards because I think I think they're going to sound nice. Let's get technical. One of the keyboards we took a look at today is the Techware Phantom Plus Elite, a three-mode TKL from Techware. It does come with your selection of Wraith pre-lubed switches. They have double-shot PBT shine-through OEM keycaps. This keyboard does come with both plate and PCB as well as case dampening and 3 to 5 pin hot swap compatibility as well as an IPX sheet. The IPX sheet does hide two of the legs but can be easily punched through. With the shroud, this keyboard comes weighing in at 1117 grams with a battery of 2500 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard with the shroud sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 34, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Using the single included pair of feet raises the back up to 41 millimeters, changing that default typing angle to 11 degrees. Let's get technical again. Today we also took a look at the Techware Phantom Plus Wired TKL, the 2023 edition. It does come with your selection of Wraith pre-lubed switches and double shot ABS shine through keycaps. It also includes an IPX sheet laid above the PCB, as well as plate PCB and case dampening, though it is only compatible with three pin Otemu hot swap switches that have an LED window due to the raised LED. This keyboard weighs in at 922 grams the chin of this keyboard sits at 16 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back of this keyboard sits at 26 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. Raising the back feet. Using the included pair of feet, you will raise the back up to 36 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 11 degrees. So today we took a look at two generations of the Phantom from Techware. This one is 2021 version, 2020 maybe, and these appear to be late 2022 or 2023 um, editions. I've got to say, um, besides the fact that these are using Otemu, I mean, this one is, is new as well, and this is wired and this is wireless, and they're basically the same, except this one's using Otemu style jacket hot swaps, and this one's using ones that's compatible with all switches. Um, also, the feet, why didn't they include two pairs of feet? I, I, I like more than just two typing angles. If I get three typing angles, then I'm more likely to find an angle that's going to work for me. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there like that as well. I do like the shroud. The shroud does, um, you can purchase the shroud uh, separately, and it gives it a very almost brutalist type of look, and it is compatible across the different ones. So you can, you know, take this up and paint it, or do something funky with it, maybe do a hydro dip, and, you know, really personalize um, your keyboard. I must say, though, the newer variants, even with the Otemu, even with the complaints I have, these keyboards sound very nice. They're at the top of, I mean, they've got to be, I'm going to have to probably do a video of the best stock keyboards I encountered uh, this year. I know there's a there's a Red Dragon that's going to be on it. This is going to be on it. And there's a couple more. I'll have to think about it. But like I said, this is, um, if you want a keyboard and you just want to pull it out and go and you don't want to spend that much, um, I... I'd be hard pressed not to recommend one of these. I'm honestly, again, there's been times that people come to me and they're like, I want a wireless TKL, and I'm like, RK. And don't get me wrong, Royal Kludge is doing much better um, lately, as is uh, Red Dragon, though I don't think Red Dragon has a wireless TKL. And the RK87, they just revamped it, which is much better, but it'd be hard pressed to say it's as good as this. Um, this is definitely 
uh, a keyboard that honestly I now that I've encountered it I'm a little sad that they only have this in full size and TKM I'd really like to see their take their take not why labeling another one but their take on a 75% on a 65% on a 60% hell even on an Alice I think that they've they've done a lot of things right I'm honestly again surprised that I had yet to come across these keyboards um, I had the one that was sent to me and I had completely forgotten about it but I'm glad that I had it so that I could actually take a look at the generations and look at how much improvement has come to these things so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and do sound test of all of these in a row then probably do a quick super cut at the end but I will be coming back to these keyboards and if you guys got any thoughts feedback any ideas or things you did to yours but I'm gonna mod these and I want to make them the thockiest keyboards that I can so I'd love to hear your guys's thoughts on this anyway until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on <laughs>